Gabriela Reyes made her debut as the high priestess in Aida at the Metropolitan Opera, also sang in the Magic Flute and Johnny Skitki. She comes to the Santa Fe Opera for her debut this summer to sing uh, Musetta in La Balem. Welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, it's really nice to be here. So your lover Marcello says of you that uh, your favorite pastime is changing your lovers, that you, <laughs> you're like a wind vane that blows with the wind, but you say that no one can see your inner beauty. Yeah. What's the real character? Yeah, I think Musetta is a woman who, she does what she needs to do to take care of herself and others. Um, so I do think she is a moral human being, someone with really, really good values. Although it, she maybe puts on this show of being this flirty, coquettish woman. In the end, it's self-preservation. She knows what she needs to do to survive in this in this time in this, of women that they didn't quite have as many liberties as we do now. So she uses her charm to to for self-sufficiency, for self-preservation, and. Um, I think definitely in, you see it in the last act where she sells the her most prized possessions, probably like her earrings, and just to help Mimi have her final want of a muff. You know, I think Musetta really does. Um, she clearly, clearly has a good good heart. Um, what does she learn in the course of the of the drama from watching the love of Rodolfo and Mimi? I think she learns that she needs to cling even more to her tactics of self-preservation because um, as much as she, I think, admires Mimi and Rodolfo as for this pure love and they get to experience it together, but she also sees the waves that they go through. And in the end, Mimi getting so sick that she passes, maybe, I think Musetta sees that and, and, and she's thankful that she she's thankful for the decisions she had made um by sticking with maybe the the more upper the upper class to take care of herself because she wouldn't want to end up in that position as well i wonder if that has at the time consumption which is what we assume Mimi mm -hmm. died of was sort of seen as a disease of the lower class yeah even though upper class people so maybe that's part of staying away from it from yeah her. i think so i think at the end she really does i mean she she feels sorry she feels this pain that that you know mimi didn't she like she didn't get away from it she ended up succumbing to it and and in the end dying for for love whereas maybe if musetta were in her shoes she would have found a way to get medicine by maybe sticking around the upper class and whether it, whether it pained her in the end she's she still survived so i think i think musetta is really someone who survives um more than anything and she does whatever she needs to do to do that um let's talk about the the waltz the song the big <laughs> song the big song yes <laughs> because in, in Certainly in this, most of everyone else's arias are, are almost unexerptable. They come out of dialogue, mm -hmm. they bloom to the melody that you know, and then they go back again, whereas you get a three-act set piece that's a whole story <laughs> to itself. How much fun is that? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And what's, re I mean, Mary has this amazing, Mary Birnbaum, the director, has an incredible way of setting it all up. And um, it's great because I think Musetta gets to... I mean, her true self is playful, is fun, even though she, she holds on to self-preservation. Um, it's, she's, she's doing this because she enjoys being maybe the center of attention, but also, I mean, I, I'm also thinking with Marcello, you know, he's, he's there. She really wants, she wants to, to pin, like, pinch him, you know, she wants to egg him on a little bit, but it's such a great scene because she, you, you see you see her in her glamour, in her in her state of um, adoration with everybody around her, and yet she continues going back to that one guy, Marcello, like e tu que sai, you know, and you, you know, you. It's really great, yeah. I always thought that he just he didn't quite get it. <laughs> you know, she she knows that she's playing, and yeah. he takes it just a little too seriously. And if he could just lighten up, a <laughs> he little could bit, just light it up. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Then I agree. you wouldn't have drama. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So you spoke about working with uh, with the director uh, Mary Birnbaum. 
What does a woman director bring to this piece that another director might not? You know, I think Mary is so uh, sensitive to all different... Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Mary Mary brings this this take on things that she's very sensitive to the relationships and to the individuals. Um, I think as a woman, she can really identify with Mimi and Musetta and really guide us to, to shell out our characters in a way that's not just two-dimensional. She really gets the, the human spirit. Um, and it's just... It's so nice to work with someone who also is so in, in, invested in our interpretations. And she's always, always able to, to have a conversation about whichever move we're making, whether it's a cross up stage or if it's the phrase that we're saying, we have a conversation about it. And she's just so, she's flexible. And at the same time, she shapes our, our mindsets, or our visions for our characters to fit that picture that she already has created in a way that is so beautiful. So but seamless. if she needs to move, you almost does it without you realizing you're being... <laughs> yeah, uh, almost. Yeah, definitely. But like, it, it's so fluid. That's the thing. It's such a fluid... Uh, it's been a, a fluid process where it's not... There's, no one really bumps heads. We just continue to create together. And Mary's so... She's really great at keeping that morale to with the, with the, with everyone on stage. Just what about working with uh, Maestro Binamini, uh, oh. who, who is Italian? Is... Yeah, yeah. Well, him being Italian, I think, is so great in an opera like this. You know, you really want that that um, genuine uh, touch to this opera, and he's he's so great because he he's strict. He knows what he wants, and yet he gives us room to play as well. And it's my first time working with him, and he's been such a dream, such a dream, especially on the short notice that I came to work for, uh, for Santa Fe. Um, he's been so understanding and so helpful in guiding and helping me shape my first Musetta. Was this in your repertoire before you got the call? Um, parts of it. I had sang the aria maybe a few times, but I, I hadn't actually worked on the full role, maybe a few sections of it. But I got the call on a Friday morning, <laughs> went to the practice room Friday evening, learned the rest of it, memorized it on Saturday, flew out on Sunday, and started the first day of rehearsals on Monday. Did you really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind. And it's my first time ever having to do something like this. Um, I've only really done professional work at the Metropolitan Opera and and then in school. So this is really the first time I get to try something new in another professional house. And I mean, they've been so supportive and so, so incredible with this, this whirlwind of a process. But it's, I'm, I'm loving it. It's really a family here. Really it is. Family. Yeah, it is. It, you know, I don't feel at all like someone's watching me like with, you know, under a microscope. They're all letting me organically fit into what I need to fit. And... And they're so supportive and so, they're just so nice. <laughs> they're so nice. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, it's so cool to be able to do my first Musetta at a company like this, a Santa Fe Opera. <laughs> yeah, that's... Where so many greats have sang here and the history this place has, it's, it's incredible. Let alone stunning. The theater itself is so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you.